Police officers who were found guilty of destroying evidence in the case were given five-year jail terms. The case triggered widespread anger across India. Officials in Mali say about 100 people have been massacred in a village in the central region of Kundu. It's been difficult to identify the bodies as they are badly burned. The entire village of Subaniku, inhabited by members of the Dogon ethnic group, is said to have been destroyed. Three leading Russian newspapers have come to the defense of an investigative journalist who has been charged with drug dealing. They have splashed across their front pages the words, We are Ivan Kolonov. The Kremlin said the case had raised many questions. The former president of Pakistan and the widower of Benazir Bhutto has been arrested on money laundering charges. Asif Ali Zadari had sought anticipatory bail, but the High Court rejected his plea. The Sudanese authorities have released three leading members of the rebel Sudan People's Liberation Movement North. The capital Khartoum remains largely paralyzed by a campaign of civil disobedience against the military, although BBC correspondents say more businesses have opened today. A growing number of Hong Kong's residents say they will hold another rally on Wednesday in opposition to a proposed law that would allow individuals to face trial in mainland China. Some activists say they will start their protest late on Tuesday to try to delay a second reading of the bill on Wednesday. International observers say Sunday's presidential election in Kazakhstan was tarnished. They highlighted widespread voting irregularities and said the arrest of peaceful protesters showed a scant regard for international standards. Air New Zealand has said it will end a long-standing ban on staff having visible tattoos. In a move, it says, that will allow its employees to express cultural and individual diversity. BBC News. Welcome back. Ну, доброе утро. Собственно, я сначала подумал, что новостей сегодня не будет, поэтому я камеру убрал, а потом не начались. За бортом у нас 22 градуса, сегодня обещают 26 градусов. И, как вы поняли, вы сейчас прослушали BBC News, это британские новости. Посмотрим, может быть, я еще поставлю американские новости. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Corva Coleman. The former White House counsel to President Nixon will go before the House Judiciary Committee today. NPR's Windsor Johnston reports John Dean will testify in the first of several hearings that will examine the findings of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. The committee will hear from Dean as House Democrats try to build their case for impeachment against President Trump. Dean was a key figure in the Watergate hearings that helped push former President Richard Nixon to resign from office. Today's hearing is not part of a formal impeachment proceeding against Trump, and Chairman Jerry Nadler has so far complied with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's preference for terms such as inquiry. An NPR PBS NewsHour Maris poll shows the number of Americans supporting impeachment has increased to a narrow majority. The president on Sunday lashed out over the planned hearings, reiterating that special counsel Robert Mueller's report found no obstruction or collusion on his part. Windsor Johnston, NPR News, Washington. President Trump will be in Iowa tomorrow, where voters have been hearing from many of the Democratic presidential contenders. Clay Masters of Iowa Public Radio says 19 Democratic White House hopefuls were campaigning there yesterday. The biggest name not on the rundown of speakers was former Vice President Joe Biden. He came in first in a major Iowa poll over the weekend, followed by Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. They all spoke at the event in Cedar Rapids. Each candidate got five minutes to speak. The Iowa caucuses are the first contest in the presidential nominating process and are held in early February. Clay Masters reporting. A major Russian journalist is under house arrest on drug charges. Many believe the charges are false and were intended to stop him from publishing results of his investigation. The Kremlin finally commented on the situation today, as Matthew Bodner reports from Moscow. In an unprecedented sign of solidarity, three of Russia's most influential daily newspapers ran identical front pages Monday, declaring support for investigative journalist Ivan Golunov. These papers called for an investigation into the conduct of police officers involved in his detention and did not rule out that he was framed for his investigative work. As of lunchtime Monday, copies of the three newspapers were selling out across the city. Golunov works for a fiercely independent online news outlet called Medusa. His editors believe he has been framed in response to an investigation he filed just before his arrest. The Kremlin only commented on the situation Monday, with spokesman Dmitry Peskov assuring journalists that the administration was monitoring the case and was aware of its resonance with the public. 
For NPR News, I'm Matthew Bodner in Moscow. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 163 points at 26,147. The Nasdaq is up more than 96 points, up more than one and a quarter percent at 7,838. You're listening to NPR. Вот обратите внимание, что в американских новостях практически вся повестка, исключительно внутренняя, про Россию, конечно, вспоминали, но исключительно в контексте внутренней политики. И последняя новость тоже, я тоже обратил внимание, что на BBC, что на VPN, на VPR, и те, и другие вспомнили про ситуацию с Иваном Голуновым, и, собственно, опять же, Новость не очень хорошая в плане того, в каком контексте она произносится. Спасибо, откладываю. Всем отличного дня и счастливо. Пока.